Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries and our Week 12 preview. KMAC, this is the year of the rookie wide receiver. All these guys are blowing up. Yeah, they are. It's crazy. Uh, Cody Latimer hasn't been used too much in Denver. I'm sure he would be doing good if they wanted to use him more than Andre Caldwell. But hey, he'll arrive soon enough. He's a pretty good player in his own right. Yeah. We have Sammy Watkins playing great. Yep. Uh, Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Calvin Benjamin. Devontae Adams for Green Bay. Another guy who... Jordan Matthews. Using, oh, man, Jordan Matthews. All these guys are great. Brandon Cook's pretty pretty decent. Can you think of another year where the, the rookie wide receivers have been this good? Not this many. And, oh, not let's not leave out Odell Beckham Jr., who has come on lately and been a stud. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we talked about it before the draft that, you know, there was... This was the first draft we've seen in a while that the receiving class was so deep that you know we're like hey we can wait till around four or five and get a receiver and it's still going to be somebody solid mm -hmm. so you yeah, haven't seen that in a long time and it's good for the sport and i mean hey you know the nfl is becoming more of a passing league it's good to see some really good receivers come through yeah i mean look at the jaguars they lose Allen robinson but they still have Allen hearns who is undrafted looking pretty impressive marquise lee has been the one been the bust, bust. Yeah. he's been the exception to the rule but that said, it's still a great year for rookie wide receivers. Truly impressive. And uh, it's awesome how a lot of these big-time talents landed in really good spots with Cody Latimer landing to the Broncos, Devontae Adams, a guy coming out of Fresno State, was teamed up with Derek Carr, so had a lot of uh, experience with a really good quarterback. Lands with Aaron Rodgers. That's a dream matchup. Yeah. And uh, definitely excited to see how good these rookie wide receivers can get. Mike Evans has been unbelievable. He looks like possibly the next version of Randy Moss. Yep. Pretty crazy. Um, another guy we haven't mentioned in Arizona, we were looking at, of course, uh, Larry Fitz. Here's Michael Floyd. John Brown might be the number one receiver there all of a sudden. Definitely the biggest playmaker as far as uh, deep threat. And, um, yeah, he's done great. Got to see if Michael Floyd can ever get back into the fold because you know, he had two touchdowns last week but only two catches. It's kind of tough to trust that guy. Of course, that's Kyle. I'm RJ. Thank you guys for joining us for our Week 12 preview. We will predict every game with the exception of the Thursday games. Those tend to be random, and, of course, this goes up a little bit late. So we'll let you guys enjoy that. Uh, we, don't, we don't recommend putting any money on that one if you guys do want to go out to <laughs> no. Vegas. Those Thursday games are pretty wacky. Rough. But as far as Sunday and Monday night, we definitely got your back. So last week, all three of us, of course, the two of us and Mike, got five games right. It was a pretty tough week Very to tough pick. Week. We all tied, which means the standings stay the same. Um, I have 21 games correct. Kyle, you're in second with 19, and Mike has 18. So it's still pretty close. We have a long ways to go. We'll be picking all the games through to the Super Bowl, and we'll see who comes in first place in our Trippy Commentaries competition. Let's go ahead and get into all the picks, starting off with the first place Atlanta Falcons hosting the Cleveland Browns. This is a pretty interesting game. Falcons are favored by three points. We have the return of Josh Gordon for the, for the Cleveland Browns. Like I said, the Atlanta Falcons have some momentum all of a sudden. Maybe they should be the favorites here up by three. Um, yeah, you would think that. Um, however, I feel Cleveland is the better team here. I think uh, even on the road, I think they can come away in Atlanta with a victory. Like I said, getting Josh Gordon back obviously is going to be huge. It's going to open everything up for that pretty potent run game that they've they've kind of uh, developed. Um, they did get rid of Ben Tate uh, this week, yeah. so you're going to see Terrence West um, in there as well as um, as a Crowell. Crowell, Crow. So, and those guys are big big time playmakers. I mean, they can make big plays. They're quick. They're explosive. That's, they're definitely going to have more holes open up for them because now of the new threat with Josh Gordon in there. I expect Josh Gordon to have a fairly good game as well. And, um, yeah, I think they're going to go into Atlanta, and they're going to beat them. So you're picking Cleveland to win on, on the, the road, road. Yep. thus downgrading the NFC South even more. It's, yeah, that's about, about to par. For it. That's, that's what I expect Cleveland to do. I mean, I've seen Cleveland beat some pretty good teams, look pretty good at times. I've seen Atlanta look really terrible at times, so... Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to say what kind of team you're going to get out of any of those NFC South teams. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I do agree with you. I think Cleveland's going to win this as well. It's definitely a tough game to pick because 
Atlanta has some things going right. I think Steven Jackson might be able to find some running room in this game against Cleveland who lost some of their key players, including Carlos Dansby, uh, their impressive linebacker, of course. So we'll see if Cleveland has enough of what it takes to defeat Atlanta in their home dome. Um, I actually think it, it, Cleveland's defense is going to hold up pretty well here. A lot of people yeah. seem to think that Atlanta is going to do pretty well in this game. I do think they'll be able to score a touchdown or two. Look for Roddy White to probably get in the end zone. I don't know what's up with uh, Julio Jones so far this year. But like you, Kyle, I really like Cleveland to bounce back from their loss last week. That really kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't think they would lose so bad. Brian Hoyer, the wheels kind of fell off. Now he gets a weapon to hopefully get him back going because I don't think Johnny Manziel is the answer at all, especially no. in a season where things are actually going right. they got to finish this off with Brian Hoyer. They get the upgrade at wide receiver. Look for them to win and possibly turn into the favorite to win this division. I still like Pittsburgh in the division. Uh, Baltimore seems to be fading, but I really want Cleveland to win this game so we can see the AFC North possibly become the best division in football in this game, they're playing off with the worst division in yeah, football, exactly. the NFC South and the Atlanta Falcons. Let's move on. We have the Tennessee Titans traveling to the Philadelphia Eagles. This seems to be a nice bounce-back game for the Eagles. Tennessee, they're a little bit dangerous here. I, I saw some good things from Zach, Mettenber or, uh, Zach Mettenberg and company there, yeah. but I do like Philly in this one at home. I like Philly as well. I'm going to take Philly to win the game. Uh, they're favored right now by 11 that's kind of a tough one there. I feel Tennessee might be able to do enough to kind of keep up with them. But in the end, I am going to take Philly, and I'll take the uh, I'll take the point spread as well. I think they can beat them by two touchdowns. Yeah, I actually like Tennessee to stay within the 11 points, but I love the Eagles, and I don't feel safe putting money on this one. If you guys are going to do some parlay action, which is something we recommend, I wouldn't include this game. There's too many other games that I like this week to go uh, with that one. Yep. I'm not going to pick Philly by 11 points, led by Mark Sanchez. Yep. Hard to put money on Mark Sanchez, Kyle. Very hard, very hard. This might be the game of the week. Detroit traveling to New England. New England, I think they're the favorite to win the Super Bowl right now. A lot of people are picking Green Bay, which I'm right there as well. But New England, they look like a monster right now. Bill Belichick, he's a mastermind. Yep. I wouldn't want to go against him. Detroit coming off of a pretty crappy loss. I, we all picked they them to win, bad. and they let us down. Yep. Do you think they could possibly win in New England? No way in hell. This is game. I'm. This is. I'm. I like the point spread. They're only favoring New England by seven. They got because I think it's going to be more than that. Mm -hmm. New England just looks way too good right now. And um, yeah, I mean Detroit last week. It was. It was. It was piss poor. You know, from both sides. Stafford and looked really Stafford bad. Stafford looked bad, and it just didn't make any sense. I mean, we, we really thought that that was a, a, a lock game last week, and it pretty much ended up being a trap game, unfortunately, uh, for a lot of people out there. So. Um, yeah, I'm not picking them. I like New England home. I cannot pick any other team but New England in New England. Yeah, this is a tough one, though. Don't get fooled by Detroit there. I know they looked pretty bad last week. I still love them. This is a tough game for them, and good luck winning at New England. Remember last year, Detroit was looking pretty good for a while until they completely... Wheels come off. Yeah, they, they started losing every game, and they turned. they basically turned into a pumpkin. Yep. Um, and we don't want to see that again this year, but it's not looking good as far as their schedule. It's setting them up for failure, and now you have some teams in that division, namely the Green Bay Packers, who look unstoppable. Good luck, Detroit. Um, they still have the, the probably the NFL's best defense and Calvin Johnson back, so after they most likely lose this game, we'll see if they can bounce back. Yeah. Uh, the next game we're going to touch on here, Jacksonville traveling to Indianapolis. There's, there's really not too much to say about this. Indianapolis got defeated to New England. I felt like they still weren't blown out as much no. as it looked like. It's just it was tough for uh, Andrew Luck to get going without his two wide receivers easily getting open. Uh, yeah. For some reason, Reggie Wayne was getting shut down by Darrell Revis, and T.Y. Hilton was getting shut down by the double team. They were leaving Kobe Fleener open, but still, I think we know that Indianapolis has got the got to get the ball into those guys hands when you take it away from them doesn't look good no no way that's going to happen again against jacksonville this is the revenge game the question i have for you kyle is do you think indianapolis can actually cover the 14 point spread 
No, I mean I'm I'm picking Indy to win this game for sure. I think it's it's going to be a fairly good you know a good game for him. I still think Jacksonville can put up enough points to keep it within that. Um, we've kind of seen that with Jacksonville. It seems they have definitely been able to kind of keep up with teams a little bit. Uh, they're still going to lose the game, but as far as covering points, they have uh, they have prevented that from a few teams this year. So I can see it happening again. You know, Indianapolis' defense has really been struggling, unfortunately. Um, you know, you you would think Andrew uh, Andrew Luck. And that offense would be able to put up enough points to contend with that. But as we saw last week in New England, they just really couldn't keep up. Um, New England was moving downfield with ease. Anytime a running back gets almost 200 yards rushing, it's impossible to win those games. So um, I see Indianapolis bouncing back, but no, I would not put money on them to cover 14. Um, I mean, one thing we got to mention here as well, what do you think about this running back matchup? We had Jonas Gray completely tear up the Colts. Now you have Denard Robinson probably licking his chops here, mm -hmm. traveling to the Dome. So, at, you know, you don't want to be on the road. But then again, running backs, I'm sure they don't mind being at in that nice environment to, to run in. Yeah. Denard Robinson probably going to have a big game here going against the Colts. You would you would expect so. I mean, you would you know, you saw all all kinds of holes being opened up for uh, for Jonas Gray last week and in, in the Patriots. And uh, if if Jacksonville can pull that off, man, because the thing is, Robinson's a lot faster than Gray. If that hole is open, Robinson's going to hit it, and he, he could bust it for a lot more bigger plays than Gray is. Gray's more you, you know your pounder. Your guy's going to keep getting five yard chunks, six yard chunks at a time. So definitely see Robinson to have some some big plays in this game, and that's what I'm saying. I think Jacksonville has enough on offense there to be able to keep up with Indianapolis. It's definitely going to be a shootout. It'd probably take the over in this game. Cincinnati coming off of a pretty impressive win in New Orleans. They're going to travel to Houston, uh, who's led by Ryan Mallett. I thought he looked okay last week. Gives Houston some hope. Uh, J.J. Watt, I think he's the favorite for MVP right now with Aaron Rodgers a close second. Yeah. Who are you picking in this one? Are you going to pick Houston, who's favored by point and a half? I'm surprised their favorite over Cincinnati, who now looks like they're jamming with both their running backs healthy. Yeah, you would you would think they'd be bouncing back. Obviously, Houston is going to uh, possibly have Aaron Foster back this week, so this is something I want to monitor more towards and, and maybe not put his bet in until Sunday, because uh, I want to know how, how healthy Foster is. Because to me, he's the difference maker. Alfred Blue looked pretty good last week. Alfred Blue does look good, but you want to have the the combination. I still think Aaron Foster, obviously, when he's healthy, is a bigger impact, uh, just because of how Cincinnati is going to have to change their game plan for Aaron Foster, obviously. And when Aaron Foster's in the game, it opens up everything for that whole offense. Um, so, And they're playing at home, so I'd say if Aaron Foster plays, I'm taking Houston to cover. If he does not play, Cincinnati is going to have uh, Gio Bernard back, so they're going to have both those running backs. That's going to help in their passing game as well. So uh, if he does not play, then I'm taking Cincinnati uh, to win um, in Houston. I really like, uh, as far as that Cincinnati running game is concerned, I really like Jeremy Hill to get the bulk of the carries there. Yeah. I think Giovanni Bernard's only going to get like two or three carries, but I think he's probably going to have like seven catches, which is actually a really good game plan to have against Houston. So I'm hoping Bernard can be healthy for this one. Yeah. We'll see if the backfield of Houston can contain but Giovanni Bernard in that passing game. We already know that Jeremy Hill's probably going to be able to do pretty well just running up the gut despite that good defensive line. But I want to see if they can get it to Bernard in space, try to line Brian Cushing, who's not been good at all this year. The safeties for Houston are not super impressive. So yeah. we'll see if that's where Cincinnati so, can get some things going. Who you I'm picking? picking the Bengals. You're picking the Bengals? All right. mm -hmm. for, for this, I'm going, I'm going Houston right now. I think J.J. Watt's going to be really? all in Andy Dalton's left you know, in his ear and uh, definitely affecting him on the day. Do you think he could win the MVP as a defensive player? I tell you what, if he gets keeps getting these touchdowns, I mean, before long he's going to be playing tight end and defensive end. So that's true. Maybe he's not such a defensive player now that he's doing offense as well. He's he's pretty much got the whole two sides going, the Deion Sanders esque role. Exactly. Maybe that's why they're putting him in offense because they know that this this act, this MVP this defensive MVP is in reach, even though they're not even that great of a team. Throw him some touchdowns, and that'll yep. definitely put him over the edge. Very interesting there. J.J. Watt's the MVP favorite right now. I don't think, for as long as I've been watching football, that there's been a defensive player this close to an MVP trophy. Um, yeah. And it's going to get rough because Aaron Rodgers looks like he's on a mission. Uh, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, we have um, Green Bay traveling to Minnesota. Uh, 
this is not looking good for the Minnesota Vikings here, Kyle. Aaron Rodgers is on fire. He is absolutely on fire. The whole team is on fire. Um, yeah, I, I got to go Green Bay in this one. Um, I got to go also to cover. Yeah, you just we're, we're seeing Green Bay playing at its peak right now, kind of like New England. Uh, I feel these might be the two best teams running right now. Uh, maybe not total skill wise, but there might be some other teams out there. You'd say like a Denver Broncos. You'd say, well, you know, they're probably much better. But for where these teams are at and where they're playing, teams clicking, doing everything right. Right now, my clear favorites are, are uh, Green Bay and in New England. It's too bad Minnesota doesn't have Adrian Peterson coming back. Yeah, that would have been good. That would be a crazy game for him to return against Green Bay. Yeah, looking this good, that would be a total upset alert as far as the one guy that could stop him. Might have been Adrian Peterson. We won't find that out. Nope. And uh, instead, Minnesota is left kind of for dead, I guess you could say, because Green Bay, it almost lines up better that they're playing at Minnesota. It's too bad it's not the Dome, but you know, leave the home games for tougher opponents. This is a good one to get them out on the road, get a victory against Minnesota, who's going to struggle. Yep. Do you think Ben Tate will be their savior? Uh, I don't think so. Not not with, you know, I mean, they, if they just picked him up, that's not enough time. Um, <laughs> I still like Jerick McKinnon. It's it's kind of weird that they picked him up. I mean, I thought Jerick McKinnon and Matt Asiata are a good combination. I thought it made sense. They thought they were getting Peterson. That didn't happen. Bring in Ben Tate. At least they're getting somebody. Yeah, that's possibly. A little more depth there. But uh, I still think Jerick McKinnon's their guy there in, uh, in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Of course, we're both picking Green Bay. Nobody's going to pick Minnesota in that one. That'll be a shocker if, if they could pull up the upset. Um, we have Buffalo going against the Jets. This is in an Buffalo. interesting game because there's news that it might get snowed out. They might actually have to push it back till Tuesday. We're not sure what's going on with that right now. That would certainly be crazy. Yeah. They're getting snowed on right there. Uh, hopefully everybody out there is being very safe. I know they're not even allowed to drive. We're no, sitting here in Florida, so I can't even fathom yeah, that right man. now. I mean, the past Snowed couple in. days, it's been in the 50s down to the 40s here, and it feels like it's Siberia outside. I don't know how <laughs> people up there can handle it. I'm sure a lot of you listening are dealing with pretty cold weather right now, so uh, hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully you enjoy the cold because uh, it's definitely out of my environment, that's for sure. But yeah. Um, hopefully this game plays on Thursday, or I'm sorry, Sunday, Kyle. What do you think here? We kind of have to take this weather into uh, you know into thought here when picking this game. Yeah, what well, you got to think about that Buffalo Bills haven't even been able to get together and practice so far. So I think uh, however many days out of the week uh, that that you lose uh, due to something like this with weather, I think they need to push the game back. I mean, I feel that they can push this game back to Tuesday, uh, maybe even Monday, have like a double Monday night game. Um, and give these teams, uh, you know, the fair chance because right now New York is obviously able to get together, do everything, and Buffalo is not. So you've kind of created an unfair advantage there. Um, I'm sure the- it's probably going to get pushed back if it gets a little too much, you know, out of hand. Here. Yeah, I- I'm actually going with Buffalo. It's funny enough. I don't, you know, I don't think they're going to get a ton of practice time in, but the whole situation, I think it's going to galvanize the team. They're going to have to win for a city and an area that's dealing with some crazy inclement weather. And we talk about this every year as far as Buffalo getting wiped out by snow, but this time it's worse than ever. I mean, what the hell? Um, I think they're going to galvanize. Might be a little snow bowl going on here. It's funny how it's the Battle of New York, even though the Jets technically play there in Jersey. I'm picking Buffalo. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm going to agree with you here. I'm going to go with Buffalo. Um, last time these two teams met, Sammy Watkins went off. I uh, had a very good day. I feel he can do the same. Now, obviously, if it's snowing, that might affect things a little bit. But generally in the snow, it's, I feel teams can still pass the ball pretty decently as long as it's you know good dry snow. If it's wet, that could be a problem. Uh, but Buffalo at home, it's it's hard to go in there and win those games. And, uh, and you know, New York, they they're coming off a of bye week, and then you know their their big victory against Pittsburgh uh, the week before that. So look for them to come off, you know, looking pretty decent with Mike Vick. But at the end of the game, I think Buffalo's gonna end up pulling off the victory. Tampa Bay, they had an impressive victory on the road at Washington. Yeah, uh, we definitely got to touch on them, Kyle. Uh, definitely some interesting news going on in Washington, but. As far as Tampa Bay is concerned, they travel on the road once again to kind of a similar team to Washington. You have Chicago, 
Chicago did bounce back. They were dealing with some very similar team chemistry issues, Mm -hmm. but they had a nice win last week. Do they keep the momentum going against the Bucs? This is tough. Two teams coming off of big wins last week. Uh, I'm going with the Bucs in this one, actually. I think uh, right now Chicago is favored by six. Five and a half. Five and a half. So, yeah, I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Um, I think this team's kind of bouncing back a little bit. Uh, obviously, Washington's having some problems with RG3, which we'll touch on uh, when we cover the uh, the Washington game. But you know, looking at this Tampa team, I think they're kind of coming forward. They're kind of they're they definitely were able to apply pressure last week, uh, which has been a problem for them for such a long time. I think they're going to have that same success on Cutler. And another thing with Cutler, you know, until last week, he's really struggled at home. He's played well on the road. At home, he struggled. He still threw two interceptions last week. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see back-to-back weeks at home to see how Cutler comes out and plays. But um, I'm going to go with Tampa on this one. That's a super tough game to pick, man. Yeah. Wow, i got to go with the Bears. I don't feel good about it at all just because, man, the Buccaneers, I feel like they have something going on there as far as building something. And that division is so terrible that perhaps if they, they actually get something going, they can at least get some momentum heading into next year where a lot of those teams look like they're going to fall apart. Um, as far as the Bears are concerned, they are hot all of a sudden. Uh, this is a good matchup for Cutler. Strangely enough, uh, Cutler's looked pretty bad at home, so maybe this is a time for uh, Tampa Bay to snipe them. I wouldn't bet on this game. Five and a half point spread is tough to, to go against, especially considering you know we might actually pick Tampa Bay. But as far as right now, I'm picking the Bears because I like Matt Forte and I like Alshon Jeffrey in this one. Mm. Cutler worries me. I know he had a good game last week, but two good games in a row. If he can know. limit, if he can limit his turn, limit his turnovers. Chicago should be able to beat Tampa, but Tampa Bay had some pick sixes or at least one last week. Some huge picks. They might have something going right at the right time. And they were able to cre- they were able to create pressure, and they're definitely going to be able to. They should be able to carry over that success against a weak Chicago offensive line. Interesting. That's going to be a good game to watch, uh, surprisingly, because neither of these teams are going anywhere. Uh, Here's the true game of the week. Seattle, man, they need a win right here, Kyle, in the worst way. But they're facing Arizona, who has by far the best defensive secondary in the league. We already know that Seattle's wide receivers aren't going to scare anybody. Now they have to go against cornerbacks that will be able to manhandle them. They're way overmatched. It's going to come to Marshawn Lynch to be able to lead this game. I'm sure Russell Wilson will have plenty of rushing yards himself. But there's some problems here with Marshawn Lynch. Uh, he was fined uh, for not talking to the the uh, media. Yeah. So something's going on here psychologically. He just paid a hundred grand out of his pocket just to not talk to the media. And this is the guy that you're pretty much relying on to carry you to victory other than Russell Wilson? Yeah, I mean, Marshawn Lynch has always kind of been that way with the media. It seems like he always kind of has, you know, a little bit of a tough time doing interviews and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't blame him. Look, you, you know, you come off a tough loss, you don't always want to talk to the media. So he's like, hey, if I can pay money and just not even have to deal with it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Because, you know, and I think it's smart because he might have done... hundred grand? Oh, come on. Look at how much this guy's been making. I mean... <laughs> But uh, anyways, I, you know, I think it's smart for him because he might have said something stupid. Something might have came out and he might not have trusted himself, you know, because yeah. you know, he could have been pissed off. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you pointed on Arizona's their, their secondary, and it is very good. Um, but, I mean, guess what? Seattle doesn't have a passing game anyway, so they haven't been winning these games off of their, you know, their awesome passing game. Uh, I think the combination of Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch is uh, it's definitely deadly enough to help win games. They, they'll get the passes when they need them, um, possibly a touchdown pass or two. Russell Wilson, look for him to get a uh, rushing touchdown, as well as Marshawn Lynch is going to have to definitely get 20, 25 carries in this game for them to have a chance. Um, I believe right now they are favored um, by six and a half points. Six and a half points. That's tough to go. That's tough to, to say Seattle's going to cover that. Cushion. But they are playing in Seattle with a young Drew Stanton quarterback. Uh, it's definitely going to have some type of impact on him. And we'll have to see if Ellington can uh, can take over. Like the you know the coaches are saying, they need Ellington to really take over um, for them to be able to be successful. And it's true. So we'll see if that happens. I got a pick right now for Seattle to win it, but I'm not going to take them in the spread. Uh, this is one that you guys definitely are not going to want to bet on. I mean, Seattle by six and a half. I'm picking Seattle here, but I think this is going to be a really close game. 
I'm going Seattle all the way. Mike's actually going with the Cardinals in this one on the road. Can Drew Stanton win? That'd be crazy at the twelfth man there in a really tough place to win. I mean, Arizona has beat Seattle in the past, and the last time they beat Seattle, Carson Palmer had four interceptions. So it shows you yeah. they don't need Carson Palmer to beat them. Yep. But uh, I-, I cannot pick Drew Stanton to win in Seattle. I have to go with the Seahawks. Yeah, big big game here. This is definitely a huge game for that division. Um, can Seattle keep up with Arizona? Because Arizona looking right now like they're the clear cut favorites to win it. Yeah, I agree. But will they be able to bounce back after a loss? That's going to be the true test because yeah. I'm pretty sure they're going to lose this week. I could be wrong. We'll find out. Uh, St. Louis, they completely destroyed the Broncos out of nowhere. Nobody saw that coming. They have to travel to San Diego. They beat the Broncos yeah. at home. Do you think they can defeat San Diego there in Cali? Uh, this is this is a tough game for me. Um, I you know I'm looking at this one and I'm. I'm thinking of the team that San Diego once was, and I don't know if that team is ever going to come back. Because San Diego still kind of struggled last week; they did not look as good as I thought they were going to. They they had a great opportunity last week to really put up some points, and they they just still looked flat. Um, and meanwhile, Rams come with a huge victory over Denver. No one saw that coming, um, and all of a sudden, Denver, or excuse me, all of a sudden, Ram, the Rams here are looking like a team that could contend with some of these teams. Um, we've talked about them in the past. They they randomly have these impressive games that get us excited only to fall on their face yeah. the week after, and I think that's what they're setting us up for. Yep, so with it being in San Diego, San Diego's defense has been playing a little bit better. Um, I think San Diego can win this game. Can they cover four and a half points? Uh, that's that's tough. I can't, I can't bet on that. It's a tough game for me to even bet on to begin with. Um, so I think for betting purposes, I would take uh, St. Louis. Um, and really? For, for betting purposes, I would take St. Louis because I don't think San Diego is going to be able to cover four and a half. Actually, um, uh, I'm picking San Diego to win by a lot. I like really? them quite a bit in this game. Yeah, that's that's one of my major picks of the week is uh, I think that St. Louis game was fool's gold. Like yeah. I mentioned, they've done this time and time again where they have the great game and only to – just look completely different. Well, the, the only, week after. only difference that I see here is that you know we saw Austin Davis was never able to finish games. It starts off good and then falls off. And Sean, Sean Hill was able to pretty much keep that game going. We were waiting for Denver to finally make a comeback, especially everyone who bet on Denver because I know there was a lot of people out there that did. We were waiting for that to happen. We were waiting for oh, Sean Hill's going to blow it here eventually, and it didn't happen. They 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 stuck with Trey Mason, uh, who was able to run on them. So. You know they have they have what is needed to win games. Uh, obviously, Jeff the Jeff Fisher effect is huge. Uh, he's you know one of the better coaches in the league. So they've got that going for him. And like I said, San Diego's they've been flat lately. They've not looked that good. Uh, they're gonna have to bounce back big to be able to cover that spread. I look for uh, Brandon Flowers to shut out Kenny Britt. I think that's one of the re- the big reasons why the Rams won last week. The Kenny Britt uh, blow yeah, up there play. on yeah. top of all the Rams offensive weapons going down left and right. Uh, once again, I like the Chargers, and I like them by a lot. Um, Denver, can they rebound at home against Miami? Uh, the one thing about Miami is their strength lately has been Lamar Miller, and I don't like Lamar Miller in this game because yeah. a lot of times the guys that do good against Denver are the all-around running backs. And mm-hmm. Lamar Miller, he's more of just your straight-up, up-the-gut runner. Has been good this year, but I just think it's a bad matchup for Miami. I like the Broncos, even though they come in injured. Yeah, I like I like the Broncos in this game as well. Um, you know, another thing that Miami has going for them is their secondary. Their secondary has been very good this year, so that is a good matchup. Um, obviously, we don't know if Emmanuel Sanders is going to play this week. Um, I think that is going to obviously it's going to play a lot into it if, if he is able to play. Um, but you know, I think this could be the week at home. You would think it sets up perfect for Denver to make that comeback um, to kind of show us the team that that we knew they are. Uh, that we know that they are. Uh, Miami obviously has a lot to prove right now. If they can go into Denver and win that game, pretty much solidifies them as a contender to try to at least maybe do something with the Patriots uh, when they face them again. So uh, interesting call here, but uh, i got to put my money on, on Peyton Manning and Denver to definitely bounce back. Yeah, I actually like him to cover the uh, the seven-point seven spread yeah, as well. Too, at home. Um, I'm calling a blow-up game by their tight end slash wide receiver, Jacob Tammy. Really? I think he's going to have a huge game in this one. Uh, the one thing you can exploit on Miami is their linebackers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have some pretty good defensive linemen. Vernon, 
uh, Cameron Wake. They got some players right there. Yeah. And look at their defensive backfield. Uh, Brent Grimes has been playing out of his mind. Ridiculous. They got uh, Rashad Jones back from suspension. So they got some players there. So the place you can exploit is those linebackers, you know, Jenkins. There's really nothing too impressive going on there. That's where I look for Jacob Tammy to come in and uh, probably get a couple touchdowns in this game. Might even shock him with a three-touchdown game. Peyton Manning's not going to go down again, I can tell you that. Yeah. I like the Broncos. Uh, Washington coming off of a terrible game. They're traveling to San Francisco, who's favored big here. Uh, Kyle, we had some interesting news. Apparently, Steve Young came out and said that his sources told him RG3 is not putting enough time in. And this is something that came from the Shanahan coaching staff. Hmm. We know that this week it's been in the news that all of a sudden Gruden and RG3 are definitely not seeing eye to eye. There's some big time team chemistry going on there. What do you think with this RG3 uh, situation? We've heard this recently from Cam Newton where he's not putting the time in. Uh, uh, man, RG3, talk about the rise and fall. Rookie year looked amazing. Since then, he's completely fallen off. Yeah, I agree. And you know, for for RG three, he better hope that he's putting in the time because obviously his legs aren't able to do what he was, you know, what he used to do. And maybe that's the problem. You know, going back, you know, Mike Vick um, before the whole dog incident happened, um, he admitted that you know at that time before all that happened, he really wouldn't study much. He would you know rely on his athletic ability to get him out of stuff and be able to create plays. And I, I still think you see that a lot. Like Cam Newton, same thing. He knows that if he doesn't make the right read, he can usually kind of move in the pocket for a minute and find something that gets open. And, uh, you know, that doesn't it just does not work in the NFL. It, it works great in college. Uh, in the NFL, you have to be able to read defenses. You've got to study the most that anybody else uh, on the team. You've got to really prepare yourself each and every week uh, to be successful in this league. And if you don't, you're going to start seeing this stuff happens. That's why you know Cam Newton looks good sometimes and looks terrible other times. They're very inconsistent. Um, you know, it sucks to hear for RG three because um, you know this is a guy that a lot of people liked. His rookie season looked really good, but if if he's shown that he's being lazy and he's not he's not putting the time and effort in the in the film room, it's going to be exposed. I mean, we're already seeing. It. I did not expect him to play as poorly as he did last week against Tampa. Uh, I thought he finally had a chance to come back and prove to people that he could be that good quarterback again, that he was his rookie. It's just not happening. You know, we heard uh, you know Jaworski say that in the offseason his mechanics didn't look right. He wasn't throwing the ball the same. Mm. So that on top of him not putting the time in, it's a ticking time bomb, man. RG3 might be a, you know working in a grocery store you know before he knows it. Now we're both picking San Francisco here. Um, do you think they can actually cover the nine point spread? No, I'm not. I'm not putting money on the cover of nine point spread. They really haven't beat any team by nine points this year. Uh, they've really had a hard time uh, getting out with an early lead or getting out with a lead and just staying with it. Um, I can't really trust that offense all the time. So I'm picking San Francisco to win, but I can't put money on them to cover nine points. I agree. Um, we we do got to mention how Colin Kaepernick, something's going on there. He's not rushing. He's not getting any one of his targets into a consistent rhythm. It's basically like who randomly is going to have a big game. Is he going to go to Bolden? Is he going to go to Crabtree? Is he going to go to Stevie Johnson? Why isn't he going to Vernon Davis at all? Is he is he banged up? Who knows? That said, they're going to win. I agree with you. Not by nine right. points, even I, though Washington came off a terrible game. I think I think their their problem is I think they're they're lacking. I mean, obviously if you have Patrick Willis, but I think they're really on the offensive side. They're lacking kind of that veteran leader. They don't really have that guy there. And this whole team seems like they're all on a different page. They're all constantly. Uh, you see it in the in the passing rounds. Kaepernick will throw a ball, and the receiver doesn't run the right route. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on. And then you also hear on the coaching staff uh, talking about Harbaugh is probably not going to be coming back next year. There's definitely some problems going on in San Francisco. They're a very inconsistent team right now, and that's probably a result of that. Uh, not everybody be on the same page. So you're going to see San Francisco look good at times. You're going to see them look really bad at times. And it's tough to take them to, to cover nine points against anybody in the NFL. Yeah, I, I disagree with you completely about the uh, the offensive leader thing. I think San Francisco's got huge offensive leaders in Frank Gore and Anquan Bolden. It's just the leader of the yeah. ship is Colin Kaepernick, and he's I'm putting the blame on him. Uh, you know, they, they got two great all time Hall of Fame type players, and the guy leading the show is not 
keeping it consistent enough. I mean, talk about another guy who's regressed. This is a guy who did a Super Bowl run, showed huge things in the running game. That has completely yeah, something, left his something's game. Something's going on between these no guys. No big plays. You know, you, know, you mentioned Frank Gore and Anquan Bolden. They're not really the outspoken kind of leaders that, that I'm talking about here, like a Patrick Willis is, who's going to keep people in check. Uh, Bolden's kind of always done his own thing for, for most of his career. It's kind of how he's been. So, you know, and exactly, it is. it does fall on Kaepernick, and it falls on the head coach for not making somebody be that role to where everyone's looking up to to get, you know, it, there's, it just seems like on the field, it seems like one guy wants to do this, one guy wants to do this. You can see him arguing on the sideline. Uh, there's just something really bad going on in San Francisco, and uh, we'll see how it plays off in the offseason. Yeah. Once again, I put the blame on Colin Kaepernick, but if they can somehow make it to the playoffs, Kaepernick always seems to shine. Winning makes everything better, yeah, right? That's crazy yeah. how that works. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, definitely an interesting team there in San Francisco. we got to keep an eye on them, see if they can make it into the playoffs. Yeah. They have a lot of stiff competition. Um, here's my upset special of the week. I am picking the New York Giants to take out the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't think a lot of people, in fact, pretty much anybody sees this coming because DeMarco Murray's coming out of the bye week saying he's hot. And Tony Romo, you think, would be healthy coming out of the bye himself. Yeah. A lot of good vibes coming from Dallas. We'll see what happens if the Giants can win this game. I really like them. They always wake up to play the Cowboys. We saw the Cowboys lose in prime time to the Redskins. So if they lose this one to the Giants, it, it might be cause for concern. This is definitely an interesting game because it is in New York. And uh, we've seen the Giants play pretty decent in prime time in New York. We've also seen them play pretty damn bad in prime time. Um, so it's, it's hard, it's hard to, to say at this point. You'd expect Dallas being a little more healthy. You're going to go back to their winning ways, being able to run the ball. I think that we'll be able to move the ball on the ground against New York. Uh, I think this game is going to be more of your shootout type, and I got to go with uh, I got to go with Dallas here. I think they're the better team all around. Uh, I feel that uh, their defense might come up with a turnover too. Uh, we've we've seen uh, we've seen Manning not look very good lately. He's thrown a lot of interceptions, and for some reason they're not running the damn ball enough. Um, especially with getting Jennings back, that's kind of what they're going to need to do here to have a chance to beat Dallas. Don't throw everything on Manning because you know once he gets once he gets some pressure on him, he's going to throw the ball away, and a lot of times ends up in the other team's uh, hands. So uh, I'm going to go Dallas, and I'm going to take him to uh, to cover the three and a half. So you are picking the Cowboys. What do you yep. think about uh, Demarco Murray in this game? You think there's any chance he can go for 200 like Oof. we saw Jonas Gray do last uh, week? You know, uh, I mean, that, that'd be tough. Deal. I mean, I think I think the Giants will. will be you know they'll do good enough to be able to prevent him from getting 200. That's a lot of yards, but <laughs> I definitely see a good game for Demarco Murray coming off the bye week. Uh, we past couple of weeks with Roma being kind of beat up, it, Murray's kind of it's kind of hurt him a little bit. Like I said, a whole week here, have off. Roma hopefully will be good to go. Um, I think 